Hello, hello. Welcome to Happiness is a Healthier Habit with me. I am Jackie Poole, where we chat about mom, life, weight loss, habits, and literally everything in between. And today's episode is going to be about sleep because that is the number one habit that we focus on when we are trying to lose fat, lose that unwanted weight. There are so many things that you can do, but if your sleep is not there, you can do all the workouts, you can eat all the right foods, but your body's not going to properly detoxify, it's not going to properly function the way it should. So sleeping is something that we as human beings need and actually we can't go very long without. So there's actually a movie on Netflix called, I think it was called Awake and I actually saw it a couple of weeks ago and you know it's basically something magnetic in the world happens and it literally switches off the ability to not be able to go to sleep. And so in the movie, it shows the characters like their cognitive function is declining as the days go. They're kind of, you know, unaware of sometimes their reactions are not the same. And so we can't go very long without sleep. Sleep is also one of the essential things besides water and food that we need. And so we actually can't go more than 11 days without sleeping. And, you know, there's a lot of people that suffer from insomnia. And I know for like women and especially moms, because trust me, I've been there. I've done that. I've, you know, done the nighttime awakenings. And even now when my toddler still wakes up in the middle of the night, like my sleep is so light. Like I can hear him walking down to my room, even with my sound machine on, you know, I try to do all the things, but as a mom, it's just part of that phase that part of that season where your sap for, uh, your sleep is going to have some type of compromise because you are in that season where your kiddos need you especially the little ones especially the infants and babies that are still trying to figure out you know how to sleep through the night or figure out that they don't need nighttime feedings anymore so it's definitely going to be a struggle if you're in that season but whenever you can, I have some tips for you today that can optimize the sleep that you get. Or if you're just trying to improve your sleep, this is also going to help. And so how do we start is basically just optimizing your nighttime routine. And so what I'm going to give you today, some lifetime lifetime, uh, tips that you can use, some tricks that will optimize your sleep. But it's also lifestyle, it's also routine. And I'm also going to give you some bonuses that you can do as far as testing to see if you're really struggling with your sleep and you're really trying to make that a priority for you right now and you're struggling and you don't know what it is. This is is gonna help you so stay towards the end to see what kind of tests you can take to take to your doctor to see if this is something that will provide you some insight on what is going on with you but some of the things that we're going to start off with is just questions that you should really ask yourself um Just to start, you know, starting a conversation with your inner self, with your beautiful self, and just see what is going on. You know, when do I start? How is my schedule during the day? You know, when is the last time I'm taking caffeine? Or am I drinking alcohol before bed? Am I drinking enough water? You know, vitamins? Am I exercising? Um, What are your stressors at the moment? I know for me, if Mondays are usually a very stressful day for me because I have all these thoughts that go on and there's days that if I don't draw or if I don't jot my thoughts down I will literally be up at one in the morning and just thoughts you know did I have the snacks ready did I have um I have to do this I have to do uh emails I have to send that you know reminder I have to you know all of these things that kind of just start running through my mind I have this appointment when is that what time is that so 
something that will help is definitely writing things down. Um, but also, again, having these conversations with yourself, like what is going on with you? Um, what when is what is your routine looking like? What time are you going to bed? What time are you waking up? How dark is it in your room? Are you feeling hot at night? Are you waking up because <laughs> you're sweating? I mean, that happens as part of our hormonal changes. And there's so many things that can really impact our sleep. And so these are just some questions that you can start asking yourself and see how you can start making some changes and having some routines that are constant, um, not necessarily at the same time, but having those same habits, kind of getting your body in tune with those routines, your body's going to start recognize, oh, you know, we're drinking our tea at night or we're reading our book at night. We're, you know, putting our phones at this time. We're, you know, dimming the lights. It's kind of signals and cues, not necessarily time-based, but your body starts noticing that and it automatically start developing some type of of circadian rhythm which allows you to know when to fall asleep when to wake up and so there's so many things right so I want to give you something for you to take today so we're going to talk about lifestyle things things that you can do now to start improving your sleep we're also going to talk about some you know supplements that you can take and foods that you can implement to also improve your sleep if that's something that you're struggling. So we're definitely going to put a plan together based on some habits and rituals that you can do, some food um, and gut things that you can improve as well as supplements because those are always a really big part of something that's going to enhance what good things you're already doing. So the good habits that you're already starting to change and make progress in, the supplements are going to definitely enhance those results. And so you're going to sleep so much better, so much better in rest. And so you're going to be able to do all of the things with all the habits that we're going to be talking about today. Because also when we're talking about weight loss, if you're not sleeping, you're more likely to make poor decisions. You know, your body's tired, you're fatigued, um, you don't make the best decisions. So you give in to cravings more. So you want to be at your best and rested so you can conquer your day and make the right choices. So again, we're going to put a plan together for you. And then towards the end, we're also going to, again, talk about some things that you can bring up to your doctor to see if that's really something that is concerning you and definitely can give you some insights on what is going on with your body. So number one in putting this plan together is setting some rituals, some time and rituals that you can do at night. So number one is definitely having a room temperature um, of 68 degrees at night. That might be a little cold for you, but trust me, especially women, if you're having like hormonal changes, sometimes I wake up kind of hot and sweaty. Um, it definitely is going to help you keep cool as well as setting a time for a sleep schedule. Not necessarily, again, go based on the time, but if it's getting to that time closer, maybe start dimming the lights a little bit. Um, don't have like high up lights, you know, shining towards down on you, maybe have some lamps on, um, change the light bulb colors. That will also help. You know, I've talked about this before. It also helps just everybody kind of get in a more calmer mood as well. And, you know, personally, I like to turn off the TV maybe an hour or so before bed. Um, phones are off before bed. You know, everybody's kind of, we're reading either doing story time or I'm reading my book or we're playing some kind of game just to wind down right and that's just part of <laughs> having kids and making sure they're being attended to as well um now there's something that's definitely in question here because we all know that exercise is definitely part of this um great ritual that's going to improve your sleep it's definitely shown that it's going to um improve the quality of your sleep and so that means you're going to be waking up 
less times in the middle of the night and things like that. But it is suggested to maybe not work out like an hour before bed or right before bed just because, again, when you think about exercise, you are creating energy, you're creating endorphins. So your body temperature is definitely on the warmer side. So when you do this at night, it might not be the optimal um thing but if that's the only time you can that doesn't mean you don't you know you shouldn't it's all based on how you feel and what works best for you so that's just a couple of things that you can do as rituals and as part of your nighttime routine and so part two of putting this you know plan together for you is also focusing on our nutrition because that's very important to uh, the results that we're going to get. So number one is definitely, you know, stock up on drink, drink lots of water. Um, You're able to absorb lots of more nutrients that way as well. Eat at least fish, you know, one to two times a week. Um, Always, always focus on low glycemic foods starting in the morning and at night as well, right? And what does that mean? That means maybe some like oats, blueberries, um, as well as almonds, maybe pomegranates. Um, you can also choose high protein meals that, that includes a variety of things that can be fish, that can be nuts, that can be beans. It just depends on, you know, you know your food sensitivities and allergies. So always focus that on your own personal needs. And so for better results, there's also studies that show that you know, when you put all of these together and add those vegetables in a higher consumption, you can definitely improve the quality of your sleep, which that means is you're going to be waking up less at night. You're going to be moving less at night. Sometimes, you know, we might think our sleeping longer might be the best thing, but it's actually the quality of sleep that we're, we need. And these foods can definitely improve the quality of those REM cycles that our brains are going going through and while we're sleeping. And so also what makes the part of the food is focusing on our gut because that is something that is part of not only our food and our digestion, but the gut involves, and I've said it before, it involves your cognitive health, your brain health, your weight loss, your hormones. So, you know, feeding your gut all of these good things is definitely going to improve and regulate that body composition as well as, you know, regulate those sleep cycles and regulate your biological clock. And what that means is just it's going to be controlling your wake and sleep cycle. So you're going to be fixing and adjusting that based on the foods that you're getting, your gut's going to be improving and being able to absorb all those nutrients. You're definitely feeding the good bacteria, the one we want. Um, It's going to be doing all that good stuff. So basically, you know, what happens when you're you know, your gut's not in optimal health, it can grow bacteria that, you know, causes you to actually lose sleep and cause you to feel more tired and cause you to continue in this cycle of lose sleep, you feel tired, you make bad decisions, and so on. So we want to keep our gut in an optimal health and we do that by giving it the right nutrients the right foods and also you know keeping again that food density and sleep and wake rituals and part three of putting this plan for you today is supplements Nutrigenomics is really how nutrition affects our genes. And I wanted to talk to you today about this because we are talking about supplements. And sometimes we make 
recommendations that are kind of for everyone. But how do you know your genes? Do you have any lab work or any genetic testing? I can help you personalize your nutrition and your supplements with that information. We can break it down into a simple protocol that gives you all of this information and it's just one click away. You can schedule an appointment with me at JackiePools.com and we can definitely get that information rolling. We can get you a personalized protocol to get you going to a healthy life. One of the most important things that you could take as well as for balancing your overall health and well-being and everything basically is having this optimal gut health. It's really the master of everything in your body. It affects your brain. It affects your cognitive health. It affects your ability to lose weight. It affects your vaginal health. It affects your immunity, your skin, your hormones. I mean, it's really the master of it all. And so having optimal gut health and having a great microbiome that's filled with great bacteria and density, and it's not only going to be... um, You know, sometimes food is not enough. The way our absorption and digestion is, is not enough. And so we need to bring the supplements in. And so I am such a fan of the Trebiotic Access because it's really one of a kind. It's a beetlet delivery system and you can literally add it to your shake, to any food. Um, I love it in my oatmeal or especially in a spoonful with the tree trim. Um, That tastes like a chocolate crunch bar. It is so good and it's really going to help improve your overall gut health. Not only does it have a prebiotic, it has a probiotic, it has a postbiotic. So it has all three in one. So you don't have to worry about any more things to take. This is really great for optimal health and well-being and really gut is where it starts and so if you're trying to get your hands on this awesome one-of-a-kind trebiotic access technology you can get ten dollars off your first order with my referral link and that will be in the show notes so can't wait for you to try it and going back to the show Okay, so supplements. So this is the third part of putting this plan for you together and helping you getting that optimal sleep. And so this is something what I'm giving you is just an overall view of what generally works for everyone. But again, having an individualized nutrition plan just for you makes such a difference and again genetic testing and lab work can definitely give a lot of information for what works best for you so again if you haven't done that please do so because it's so beneficial to have those little markers that tell you what works best for you I have an example of this because When I did my genetic testing and I did my own protocol and it tells you lots of things that help your, you know, things that you can do and such. And on this thing, it's so crazy because all my life I've been, I've always struggled with my left and right. It's just something that I've done and I always have to put the L up because I just will know for sure that that's if the the L, you know, as the little kids do, they race and whatever sign makes that, whatever hand makes the L, that's your left. And so on this genetic protocol, I have a gene that actually specifies that I struggle with my left and right. And so that is how deep we can go into this conversation of what works best for you. You know, I can say that 
you know, magnesium is so good and all the benefits are great, but you might not benefit from them as greatly as I do from them. So having such an individualized protocol, especially with this, you know, nutrigenomics um, data and all of these things that are coming out are so beneficial because we want you to be successful. And so the supplements that I'll be talking about today are just very general. And again, if you want something more personalized that will benefit you, then go to my website, JackiePools.com and schedule that appointment and we can get started, right? So let's go ahead and dive in into the supplements. And so number one is going to be L-theanine. So this is a biological active constituent of green tea, which remotes or promotes relaxation without causing, you know, the drowsiness, you know, at that at any time of day. So you can definitely take this at any time. It won't cause you to feel anything. And even though it's an extract from green tea, it's not going to ca- cause like adverse effects, like if it were to be caffeine. Um, Again, it definitely supports mood, it supports relaxation, and if you're like a healthy individual, then it's definitely going to promote that sleep quality. Number two is going to be magnesium. So magnesium is essential and it's a cofactor in more than 300 enzymes throughout the body. Again, it supports muscle, it supports uh, recovery, nerve function, cardiovascular health, and there's so many things. Digestion, I mean, I can go on and on and on about magnesium, but there's so many things that it's involved in. And again, one of the there are studies that show that you know higher doses of magnesium can definitely improve sleep quality. Number three is going to be tryptophan. So I'm pretty sure you guys heard of this before, like in your Thanksgiving, if you're feeling sleepy or something, is because, oh, you ate too much turkey. But that's really not it. You probably had a really big meal and you're crushing from all the sugars that you've eaten, potatoes and pies and all of that good stuff, and your body's just crushing. That's probably what happened. It's not necessarily the tryptophan. So what tryptophan is, it's an essential amino acid and it's a precursor to both serotonin and melatonin. So what that means is without this amino acid, tryptophan, you can't really make serotonin. And serotonin is like the feel-good hormone, right? And melatonin is a great hormone for sleeping and causes you to have better sleep. So that's also going to be very important to have. Another supplement that I definitely would consider taking is cortisol calming that has like ashwagandha and a few other herbs and things that help calm because sometimes our cortisol can rise and and you know move up and down and so that's going to really affect how we sleep especially if our cortisol is rising up in the middle of the night it's causing some stress right some stress some inflammation so you definitely want to make sure that if that's something that you're dealing with as part as your inability to sleep then this will definitely benefit for you so We're just going to review what we've talked about today. And that's basically, we've talked about this, you know, general plan for you, including some sleeping and lifestyle rituals and routines that you can include, like exercising, um, you know, environment in your home, as well as things that you can eat and as well as improved digestion and supplements, right? You know, we talked about magnesium, tryptophan, and all of those a uh, couple of supplements that you can take. And so now we're just going to dive in a little bit. I just wanted to add this in because these are great to take to your doctor if you're just having some concerns about your sleep cycle. 
Okay, so we talked about putting this general sleeping plan together. We talked about your lifestyle and some sleep and time rituals that you can do, some exercising, best timings, you know, the types of food and digestion for gut health, as well as supplements, which are so important to enhance the quality of sleep as well. And so, uh, towards the end now I wanted to kind of focus on some specific tests that you can take to your doctor if you're really struggling with sleep and not really knowing what's going on these are just general things general information that your doctor may suggest to do based on your results um, but again some of these tests can are as checking your cortisol that could be through a serum or blood test or you know urinary saliva checking your melatonin levels as as well as for women, some of the most important ones I feel that are or should be checked for this would be like iron, um, magnesium, um, inflammatory markers that could be like CRP. Um, one important test for women as well is really checking your estrogen and progesterone and testosterone and that could be through blood or urinary. So these are just a couple of tests that you can do. And if you have questions on any of these, please feel free to email me at happieryou at gmail.com. And lastly is going to be, again, genetic testing. And so I'm really emphasizing this today because the protocols that it gives you, it's totally worth it if you're struggling to not know what is going on you're doing all of the things right and it's not working um, so if you've had like a 23 and me you can definitely submit that to the appointment and we can discuss your results you know those results come back super quickly and so those are really great to have to put a personalized for you protocol and so that I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I can't wait to see what we talk about next week. Thank you guys. Have a good day.